What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Games Cast, episode 32. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the pride of Long Island, Colin Moriarty. It's good to be with you here today. It's good to be with you here today as well. Uh, the pure one, Tim Geddes, off on a mission. Don't a need him. secret mission. Nobody needs him anymore. Are you kidding me? With technology these days, mm. he could be Skyping in. He mm. could be up on a Connect right now talking. He could be doing whatever. It doesn't matter. He could be on He's downloaded talking. his consciousness to us. Sure. But it means that we get to start the show as a normal show should start. With just like, hey, here's the show and the right, number. Right, None right. of this first ever, mm-hmm. last, whatever. The f- sure. You know, get out of here. Sure. But go to Target and buy more goofy ass shirts. Jeez, I didn't realize we were going to really. I think, I mean, that could be topic number one. Him. Topic number one could just be Tim Getty's <sighs> fuckwad. So that's a statement. Are well, you I know, saying, but then, is it, then, wait, we, but then we, that's like the topic of a paper. But is it Tim Getty's fuckwad? Because then that's a different topic. Tim Getty's colon fuckwad. No, no punctuation after it. No, because okay. it's a ti- it's a, a title statement. of a paper. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, could because the title of the paper could be Tim Gettys colon fuckwad. What would? <sighs> yeah, why not? It could be. It could I mean, be. Why You're not? Right. You're right. I'm not, I'm not talking about necessarily it. about grammar. I'm saying it's pretty definitive. Yo, Kevin, you've known Tim his whole life. Yeah. Is he a fuckwad? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he is. What's the What's the definition of a fuckwad? Tim Gettys. You look it up, it's him there, and he's doing that it's grin thing he does. That. Yeah, he's doing that Tim Gettys grin I stuff he does. I didn't expect uh, that You know that definitive an answer. I'm glad that you gave it to me. Um, That's what I'm here for. There it is. Hidden behind Superman. All right. What do you want to do today? What do you want to talk about today? We don't have we don't have Tim here. Yeah, nobody so can hold us any, back. We anything, need everyone. And all, all systems go. Anything goes. Then I'm, what I'm going to do, number one, is open with what he should always open with the rigor or oh. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, you, what, did this that, what was that? Wait, hold on a second. Kind of no, stop it. What was that word? <laughs> that was what you get because you're shit talking. We, we've been speaking for eight hours straight. But I feel like it's also a product of of karma. I'm stretching karmic. my tongue out. It's karmic. Do the Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> it's the noise that really sells it. It's I think, really too. frightening. It's a frightening. The rigmarole. Okay. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of funny games cash each and every week. Jeez, it's really hard today. Two, sometimes three best friends gather on this table, and we bring a whole bunch of video game news and topics for you. If you like that, you can head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, get the entire episode early and for a little bit of money. If you don't want to give us any of that little bit of money, no big deal. Go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games each and every day, Monday through Thursday, to see a broken out topic by topic until we post the entire show for you as one big MP3 and one big video. Portilla, do we have a good weekend? Or did you have fun with Colin? Did you have fun with Uncle Collie? Collie, Collie, oxen free. I hung out with a bunch of uh, Boston Terriers. Two of them. They were rambunctious, but they were puppies. So yeah, that's why they the were Little dogs are just really too much for me. Yeah. A little piece of But you had shit. fun with Porty. Oh, no. We had a good time. We bonded. I mean, I, I like I said today on Colin and Greg, I broke him of many of his habits. and I don't think that's true. Because uh, a break would mean then he's just out of the habits. But He won't do them with me anymore. Oh, okay. We had a little thing going on where he tried to sleep. You know, he... He, my bed's too tall for him. He doesn't have the little stairs. You could have moved the stairs. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Okay. Because what I wanted, he didn't go on your bed at all. Uh, well, that was on purpose. Yeah. Uh, but he came in and he was sleeping with me and my girlfriend the first night. And yeah. then he was in there for like an hour, an hour and a half. And then he started in with the mouth noises like, uh, right next to my And I'm like, I don't think so. Yeah. So I put him downstairs and I was like, go to bed. And he just kind of scurried into your room. And I just kept our doors open so that nice. he was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he would do little things. You'd hear him jingle jangling yeah. his chain. He'd come in in the middle of the night to see if any of the condition had changed. <laughs> and I'd be like, Portillo, get out of here. And then he would just and he would just go back to his bed. Uh, otherwise, you know, he's very, you're very needy, Portillo. You're extremely needy. And uh, so I, you know, he always needs to be on your lap. I, as, he always needs to be on someone's lap. As long as it's like a warm body, it really doesn't matter who. Yeah. He had, you know, his, de- his Greg depression going on. So I, I tried to be like, Portillo, stay back, stay back. And don't, you don't have to be on me. Just stay there. Sure. I'm here. Just stay there. You're close enough. You're telling him. You're close, close enough. enough he, I'd be sitting in a chair. He'd try to do the little thing where he wants to sit in your lap like this. I'm like, we're not, we're not playing this game. Yeah. The one problem as we discussed is just his rampant. He just shits. So much. I, I've never seen anything. It's, and that's a new thing. That's a, that's a month. That's a month. It's been a month of all of a sudden he's just double pooping. And they're normal consistency poops. Yeah, they are. They, they seem he's normal. He's just very and, clean all of a and sudden. And the volume is, seems to be a normal, for the most part, a normal pooping. He's a small, he's a small child. Right. Uh, but what was surprising to me was it doesn't seem like he eats an exorbitant amount either. No. 
the poop's consistency is good. But when and, and I've watched him many times in the past, but this was you know I used to really watch him more like some years ago over an extended you know few days or whatever, and I feel like he would poop once a day, and once he like maybe twice, and like once yeah. he pooped, like you would expect like okay. You pooped, so now we can do a little quick jaunt, and you can pee, and then we're going back inside. Yeah. And he's very particular about where he pees, because I know when you leave the house, you usually break right. I always break left. I break right to get to the trash can at the top of the street, right, so right. I throw poop away there. I break left for two reasons. Sure. One, it keeps poor Tilla never knows what's going to happen. Sure. You know, And two, uh, I feel like I'm going to encounter more dogs that way. Mm. And that's, that's no good for me. I run across the street with Portillo. To, to the, the trash park can. to get to the trash can yeah, there, and then yeah. we try to get make it back and forth in 15 seconds. That's tough. I'm dragging That's him around, yeah. and people are looking at me like, what are you doing to this dog? Yeah. Uh, but the, the poop thing discouraged me because, like I told you, I had never seen anything like it. He pooped twice in mm -hmm. one walk. I know. Normal poops. Two normal poops in one walk. I'm, I feel you, brother. Something's weird with him. And I wonder... I think it's just... He's getting it older. Sounds, yeah, but it's like it sounds like, it, like you want to be regular. This is... Like, he pooped... 75% or maybe 80% of the walks. My theory had always been that he could poop at any time. Like, he was just always ready. And I feel like now he's just to the older, and he's just like, man, one in the hand's worth two in the bush. I'm not going to hold this and hope I go out again in six hours. I'll just double up it right now. Because I, I do feel like that, there might be something to that because he feels like, I feel like he's straining when he's pooping, too. Mm. There's a little bit, he you know takes his position, but I feel like there's a little shaking. Yeah. You know? He's trying to get it all out. And then I have to wipe his ass. Yeah. Which I didn't really appreciate. I understand. But I feel like now that I know you do that, I well, have just, to do it, it because... You don't have to, but then you're going to get a poop stain on your shirt, maybe on the couch. These things happen. Yeah, no, I know. That's not acceptable to no, me. But I never never really thought about, you know, because he's not a cat and therefore he's a dirty creature, sure. that he doesn't lick his own butthole. Like Chloe, when she lived here, really liked licking her butthole. Yeah. I mean, that's that was Chloe her... Chloe was that a cat, was, if you're new to the kind of funny shows. That was her thing. Right. I mean, Chloe oh, that did, was a big timer thing. Chloe had a few things. She was, she was bitchy. Yep. She scratched the shit out of Scratched things. everything. But she. Uh, hairballs. Yeah, Lots she threw hairballs. up hairballs. But she really. She cleaned that asshole. Really man. liked licking her asshole. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I've never seen anything quite like it. Now, if I could lick my own asshole, would I do it all the time? Probably. Who knows? Yeah. If I could lick my own crotch, I'd be inside all day. Sure. Uh, what gang? But, you know, just pleasuring myself. Sure. I know. I understood where you're going with that one. Uh, so it's it's a bit of a dichotomy between. Sure, I never both. thought of cleaning his butthole because it had never been a problem. And then I remember Scott Bromley made a comment about how particular b the roommate before you was were, the roommate before you was, was with his dog. Sorry, this, this sentence is all jumbled in my head. And I was like, that's interesting. And then when I noticed Porty's pooper was getting dirty, I was like, well, here we go. He's just getting older. This is how it is. He's then sometimes I'd scrub his butt a little bit with the thick rag. But nothing would be on there. Sure. And then I'm like, did I do it right? No, and you did it right. It's, it's like sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not. It's just yeah. he's a little, he's a little old man now. Yeah, he's a little piece of shit. I mean, he at is. the end of the day. But so, we had a good time. Are we gonna? What, what is this podcast about? This is the kind of funny games cast, and I feel like we're, you know, how we used to run podcasts by ourselves, one on one, quite a bit, where I'd host and you'd be along for that. And I feel like this is usually how it started. Right. So everyone's getting a taste of how you stop used to looking be. at me. To continue on, the how it used to be track. Our first topic is about PlayStation. Oh. Now, Colin, today. The day we're recording this, yeah. there was a rumor that was then confirmed from the UK and Europe saying that the PlayStation Plus subscription was going to be going up. They were going to be getting charged more over there. Mm, more right now, it's yeah, it's five pounds and 49 mini euros for one month. Three months is setting you back. 11 pounds, 99 mini euros. 99 mini euros. That's the whole thing. Sure. If you're also new to this show or our content, we call everything mini euros if it's not the pound. I know it's Let's probably not correct. Let's be honest. We don't understand Europe. And frankly, we don't need to because eventually they're going to get on the dollar. Everybody is. Uh, <laughs> when they went through this, they had their quote there, the statement. And go, the statement from Sony reads, We are dedicated to bringing PlayStation Plus members the best possible service with the most compelling content. From September 1, 2015, we will be increasing the price of monthly and three-month PlayStation Plus subscriptions in line with market conditions. We will continue to invest in PlayStation Plus to ensure an unparalleled experience featuring the best quality games and features colin hmm. the topic's twofold one hmm. this is the harbinger of doom this is going to be coming to here to our shores the united yeah. states of america the north american playstation market and is this what we've predicted forever that playstation plus is just too good a deal and now things need to change yeah i don't know i i, you, I thought you made a really compelling point that i had not thought of on on colin and greg today which is that since they're not touching the, the yearly subscription which is what you should be buying anyway that it seems like this is a way to compel you to either 
just pony up the money yeah. now that it's w- even a better deal than it already was to buy the year subscription. Or if people are just like, oh, this is free, I'm going to play it this month, and then I'm just going to discontinue my my thing, that's obviously injurious to Sony, who pays lump sum payments right. to all the publishers and developers to get these games for free. So, um, and that, I actually think there's something to what you said that I had not thought of. I think that that's pro- there's probably something, yeah, something. Exactly, yeah. I, ha- I really, until this had happened, I never actually thought about how the other half might live. If you're one of these ruffians without playstation plus one of these unwashed masses mm. that yeah you'd see that all right game x is coming out day and date on playstation plus and you can buy it for 15 dollars, or you can buy the playstation plus subscription that one month and as you pointed out well after that month is over you don't get to play that game anymore but then again it's like i don't know how many indie games i'm getting and playing the rest of my life you know yeah, what I, mean? I mean i mean the, the point can be made that if like uh i don't know uncharted 3 or something well, that's not a really good example but if uncharted 3 was free one month uh and you only had to pay the equivalent of what is it five five or six euros? So that's yeah. like or pounds. So that's like ten dollars, not even, um, or about ten dollars. That's a good deal for you, even if yeah. you only did it once. And you get so you either pay forty or fifty or sixty dollars for the game, or you pay ten dollars for the game. You don't own it, yeah. But you get to play it. That makes sense. I really do think that you know. I, I would have never really thought about it from that perspective. I think that that's. Uh, and you have to imagine, like we said, they've had the figures. They see what's happening. They see there's a spike when there's something great, mm-hmm. and then it probably goes down. Sure. So. I would be of the mindset that yes, this is going to come to America. They have to be thinking this as well, right? No, I, I don't. I'm not convinced about that because I, I mean, if what you're saying is true and the data plays that out across all territories, that's true. But remember, this was only announced in European territories and EU territories, so it's not. We didn't hear anything about South America. We didn't hear anything about Japan. Um, I think this has something to do with weak m- currency in those places too. Um, the dollar, the American dollar, is okay right now. The euro isn't, and so. I think that, comparatively, of course. Yeah, yeah. Then again, the yen has been weak for a very long time, and, and you would think that they would maybe announce that in Japan. But when you look at the amount of money that PlayStation Plus costs in Japan, which I don't know off the top of my head, it might even be more in, in equivalent money than it is here. In other words, I feel like there's probably financial and monetary reasons why this is happening as well, um, in addition to what I think you were saying with with kind of just encouraging people to just pony up. Um so no, I, I'm not necessarily worried about that happening here. If it does, then then this will play out, and that's fine. But I I think that it's very similar, as I said on Colin and Greg, about why games in Canada are seventy Canadian dollars because the Canadian dollar is weak, um, and so they have to charge more because there's there's you know conversion rates that are that are necessary for them to actually make their money, since they're not you know Sony doesn't do business in Canadian dollars, and Sony doesn't do business either in pounds either. So, um, in terms, of, in terms of in terms of their in terms of their main business, so they yeah. have to they have to they have to play things in different territories according to the monetary trends in those places to make money because of 50 dollars in the united states is not equivalent to you know something standard in other countries where it's like there's always a predictable way that you can make the same amount of money it's a it's a global game it's a, it's a global business so I, I think i think it's there's a complicated reason why this is happening and i feel like if they were going to do that why wouldn't they just announce it everywhere you know? i've never known sony to communicate a message well Efficiently, mm. clearly, sure. and I'm not. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I am knocking them. Actually, I'm knocking them hard. No, but they, no that's well, how don't. things don't. leak all the time. They're from different territories. Blog posts go up one point over here, and then all the way over here. And like, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, they they certainly don't communicate well at all. Um, they're better I, than some others, but they they're getting better. There had been a rumor I remember leading into oh, two threes ago, three threes ago that they were going to up PlayStation Plus and that that was going to be the big deal and da 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 da. And like that didn't happen, right? Like it's been maintained. So my question, the next question then, is. Is PlayStation Plus right now too good a deal? We talk about this every so often that we don't, we're not businessmen. My degree's not in finance, neither is yours. Sure. Portillo's might be, who knows? But when we get out there and you see how all these deals roll, this has been going uh, since 2010, PlayStation Plus has been rolling on. You know what I mean? Yep. I, I remember, Five long years. I remember when it started, yep. and I remember you, I think you called me or texted me, and I immediately, you and I immediately got on and bought it. Like day one, you must have been yeah, minute I two, was, I was minute five or whatever. Yeah, you know what I was I mean? there right from the beginning. And we did that article for IGN for a long time where we're tallying our purchases and this is going to make it. And then it, we stopped because it was like so clearly going to outrun the $50 we spent or whatever. Do you, you're, you're a big fan of markets, economics, paying attention to things. I'm a big fan of markets, yes. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's too good a deal? Is it too, is it too good to last? I mean, like the fact that it's still going, of course they've dialed it back. That there have been changes, you know what I mean? If you remember, of course, the instant game collection used to be everything that had ever been added, and then they're like, all right, dial it back. Now it's just you get these two games every month yeah, for I every season. I forgot about that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was, and, uh, to the credit, and here's something that's interesting today. I, 
you haven't seen the comments popping off about the upping of the fee, right? Nor have you, I seen comments saying, if this comes to America, I'm out or da 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 da. I feel like I expected that here, and I also expected it when they're like, we're going to go two, two, and two. I expected people to be like, this is preposterous. What do you know? Everybody's been chill with it. Yeah, I think that. You know, we were certainly early PlayStation Plus hipsters in the sense that we, you know, we had called it day one that this was actually going to be work out pretty well. Yeah, and a lot of people were against it. But I'm of two minds about this about the way PS Plus is now because could this be a response to uh, money? Could this be a response to saying like we need to make more? We need to because Sony's not doing something to break even; they're doing it to make money. Yeah. Is what they're finding behind closed doors, we kind of understand a little bit from our, some of our developer friends how the PlayStation Plus system works in terms of how games become free and what's paid and stuff like that. Right, right. But it, are they finding the landscape more competitive in terms of, yeah, you can have our ga- game extra free. We need this much money. Sure. And they're like, well, we don't pay that much money. And it's like, well, too bad. And, yeah. then, and then they go around to all the developers and they find out that it's maybe costing them a little bit more money to, to do this because... There is, you know, like Rocket League is a great example. Not that I know anything about, you know, uh, about soccer. what they were paid or whatever. Uh-huh. I don't certainly know anything about soccer, but Rocket League is huge. It's fucking huge. Yeah. And Colin was certainly right about that. But uh, Rocket League made a sacrifice to take a lump sum ahead of time to put the game out there, and propagate the game out there, even though it's also available on PC and they're making money there for sure. The trade off was like, well, will this pay off for us? Will we make more money this way? It's guaranteed money, or will we make more money by actually selling the game? Sure. And this is a risk that every developer has to take. And so I feel like the risk is so big and actually can be so cataclysmic for small studios that they actually have to up the amount of money probably that is being paid by a lump sum, because, especially because millions of people are downloading these games. Um, and you have to assume that millions of dollars are not being paid. I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume that Sony's paying millions of dollars for these free games. I don't sure. think that it's that I much. Agree. I think it's hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Um, so in other words, like if you port your game to PS4, it might cost you half a million dollars to, for the port, and we'll just pay for you for port. You know? yeah. um, that's just a hypothetical. So I'm I'm of two minds where I think that there's probably upped competition from savvier developers than there were in 2010 where they just like were wanted their lump sum of money. Now they realize they can compete with each other and actually a uh, high tide raises all boats. And I actually think the other side of it is and a more disappointing point side of it is that I PlayStation Plus is not what it used to be in the sense that on PS4 you need it to play online. Like you True. need PlayStation Plus. True. So I am a little disappointed that they're, they're – it's like they're – if this is true and they're going to raise prices and all this kind of stuff everywhere, it is a bit of a Trojan horse. And I don't, I don't, I don't think that's really fair because Sony was always known for um, their free internet and, or their free online, and that's why we always said the PSN sucked. But now the PSN isn't free anymore really, and right. it still kind of sucks. So if they're going to take more money, and I only hope that they are using it to reinvest Put in it the back system in. to make it better – um, because Xbox Live is still so clearly superior. Well, again, what's interesting here, especially about the fact that they're upping only the incremental deals, the one month, the three months, right? And why I think you're not seeing complaints, and we didn't see complaints when it went two, two, and two. And uh, uh, granted, there were some complaints, but you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't well, the so outcry. We'll about anything. Exactly. Is the fact that I think they're only trying to pinch the people who are abusing the system. Hey, you're a loyal PlayStation Plus person. You're gonna, you, you're here, every, you know, for the year. Here you go. You know what I mean? We're not trying to get you. We are trying to get the person who is like, oh, Rocket League's awesome. Rather than pay, pay, buy Rocket League, which I guess you can't. Even, can you buy Rocket League? You can buy Rocket. Yeah, you, you could if you're not PS Plus. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's confusing. You know how much they're selling for? Fifteen. Yeah, there you go. Then I'd buy. I'll buy it at the you know the ten bucks or whatever for one month and play Rocket League for a while. And yeah, it's weird. I mean, some people and I understand it because some people just have have to nickel and dime. And I don't. I don't. You know, it's like when people talk about like companies not paying their fair share in taxes or rich people yeah, not yeah. paying their fair tax taxes. It's like the loopholes exist and they're totally legal. Then you take advantage of the loopholes. That's what businesses do and yep. that's what rich people do when they don't pay their fair share. Which you know I don't want to get too political, but that's kind of one of the arguments. And it's like, well, this is the same thing. Like if the if the loophole exists. Then why shouldn't people take advantage of it? It's not, it's not like they're necessarily doing anything wrong. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't quite understand why you'd want to take advantage of that loophole since the game is only available for that one month if you only play it, pay it a, a month at a time. And if you do that like six or seven times, then you might as well just buy a fucking full year at that but point. But you figure there's always that thing where people are, it's always hard, it's always easier to say when you're on a budget, right? Oh, I have $10 dis- disposable income right now versus, oh, I have, what is it, $50, $60 of disposable income at this one point. You know what I mean? Like, there is the long game, and at some point you have to look back, but this is the whole argument of leasing a car, right? Where you get down to the point of like, well, fu- or even renting an apartment, right? Of like, you look back at how much money you put into a rent, and like, granted, if we didn't live in San Francisco, re- we lived in a real place with a real housing market, we could be like, 
well, fuck, we should have bought a house if we, were, we knew we were going to stay here this many years. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's complicated, but I, I think there's something to your point. I mean, I, I think that that's, uh, the calculus as usual in business is probably multifaceted and there's multiple reasons why they do this. I think it has to do with monetary policy. And I also think it has to do with, not my, monetary policy, I mean, that's, they're not the fucking Federal Reserve, but more about like the current, the value of currency. Sure. Uh, across global lines, across, you know, international lines. And then, um, encouraging people to go to go full. Uh, I think that if they did raise the the price of the full year, then yeah, that, that would throw that out the window. But yeah, exactly. Then people and then I think people would get pissed and they would be there. What are you adding? What are you changing? Are you making the network better? Da, 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 da. Yeah, and that's the thing that they have to worry about with this is just the PS Plus PlayStation Network is using PS4 and using PSN on PS4 is just such a great experience, isolated from everything else. Sure. Because Vita's is like whatever, and then PS3's was really bad, but. The network needs to be better. They need they need to focus more on fixing huge endemic problems to PlayStation Network that they have not fixed yet. Why is PS Why does PSN have to go down every few weeks for maintenance? Why? Yeah. Xbox doesn't do that. Yeah. Like why does that? Why can't you change your name? Yeah. Like why can't? Why does it take so long to load everything on your friends list? Yeah, it's just like it's absurd. Why can't I organize my friends? It's list? totally it's absurd. That's... Like the, there's just certain things that I'm being I'm trying to be patient with PlayStation Network because I do think it's getting better and they are making incremental changes. They're listening. They, they certainly and that's are. The thing is like where it's heartbreaking to. We have interviews with Shoe, and it's like, well, why can't we change the PlayStation Network name? It's like it's really complicated, and we're you know it wasn't built for that. And you're like, oh well, that's a real answer, but that sucks. You know what I mean? Like, my, I would, yeah, my my retort to that, and, and no disrespect to anyone over there, is just uh, figure it out. You know, fix it. Yeah, like that's your job is to fix it. Xbox One couldn't play like they didn't even think backwards compatibility was possible and i believe them when they say that i don't think it was possible and i'm sure i'm sure that they had a different business plan for for in, in, integrating xbox 360 games on xbox one but they fucking figured it out yeah and they and develop they, they they put a lot of resources into figuring it out it didn't it, was, it wasn't something that just happened you're not gonna be able to just change your psn name on the fly figure it out and if and if people are going to pay you more money for the network then you really need to figure it out sort it out uh final thoughts playstation plus still a no-brainer yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, well, if you're on a PS4, I mean, it's it's not only no brainer. It's it's you, you don't get the full experience without it. But yeah, but like you don't ever use that for the most part. No, but I mean, I wouldn't have been able to play Rocket League or something without it. Like, sure. It, the, there there are certain there. It's just as PS3 gamers, we took for granted a certain number of things that can't be taken for granted on PS4. Sure. But the other way is that what we, you know our significant Stockholm syndrome with PS3 is is now you know, laid, I love is, the is, XMB. Is, is laid bare. Yeah. Um. So it, it does go both ways. Okay. And yes, buy PlayStation Plus. It's phenomenal. I love that thing. Topic number two. What's happening over there? Oh, I just was looking at the time. See how long that topic was. It was 22 minutes. It's good to know. I'll keep, I'll keep you updated as we Thank go you. forward. Thank you. It's very important. Topic number two is, uh, is upon us, but I have something to say. This topic is not, I, it's not even a sponsor thing. This topic is shout outed. This topic is supported on Patreon by the one and only Mike Biffle in his game Volume. Now, what's exciting about this, Colin, and why it's the second topic? Do you know why? They get through. Why would volume be sponsoring the second topic? Of course, they went to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. games. Kind of. It went it, no, not the topic. They went to co- patreon.com oh, slash kind of oh, funny. So you're being literal about why kind of funny games. All right. What, what sponsored that? us for a month of shout outs because they're awesome. So that's what you're asking. Because I thought what I thought you were asking was why are you putting the sponsorship before this topic? I am, but you're thinking about it in the wrong way. Okay, I see. The reason this is on topic two because that means that this topic will be posting on Tuesday on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games, which is the 18th, which is the release date of Volume. Very the exciting. Game. This segment is sponsored by Volume, a stealth game out now for PlayStation 4, PS Vita, PC, and Mac. From the creator of Thomas Was Alone, Volume combines the core story. St- combines a core story starring Andy Serkis and Danny Wallace with an editor that lets you make and play content as part of a growing community of stealth game fans. For more information, follow at Volume Game on Twitter. And of course, go get it right now. We've, we, we, we've seen this game before. We sure have. I'm it, very excited for it. I'm excited about it too because it, it reminds me of, I mean, I always kind of liked the VR missions in Metal Gear yeah. in the sense that like I was awful at them, but I liked the idea of just strategically getting through sure. from point A to point B, and, yeah. and that's what this game is. I mean, it's 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 just those clever VR missions and kind of collecting things as you go and stuff yep. like that. I think it's I think it's cool, and I and I I think uh, Mr. Bithel is a extremely talented, extremely friendly kind of guy. Yeah, and, he's a and, great dude. Yeah. big supporter, kind of ha- funny. Happy from the to beginning. support him as well. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy very happy to support back. him. Uh, 
Topic number two, Colin, is something I, it came up to me, I think over the, I, you, you always have this, right? Where you can't remember what was said on what show. Yeah, I don't remember I what I said. I think this popped up at also. RTX. It might have been Games Cast last week. And it sounds like something we would have done before. But according to the Kind of Funny forums over at kindoffunny.com slash forums, we haven't. Because I did some research on this. Okay. But the topic is gaming omissions, the things we didn't play but should have. Okay. Now, this stems from, of course, you saw me lugging around my 3DS. I was, yeah, I don't know you why. Saw yeah, you saw me tweet good. that I was playing Super Mario Brothers 3. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Tim Mario asked Brothers. me about this, I believe, during the RTX panel, but it might have been Gamescast last week. And both of you flabbergasted to find out I've never played Super Mario Brothers 3. And when I say played, I mean sat down, played start to finish. I'm going world to world playing it. Sure, I've popped in at somebody's house, I'm sure, and played it. I've seen it a bunch of times. I've watched top 100 videos where it pops up. But I've never sat down owned a copy of Super Mario 3 and played it. I didn't have an NES. So I was a Sega kid. My first Mario game was the one on Game Boy. I can never remember. Super Mario Land? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, so, I mean, I've always been behind in Mario games, but I, obviously I've played Mario 1. I've played Mario 2. That was one a lot of times you played at your friend's house. That was a big one. Sure. And then 3, for some reason, never got played in that, that, that ecosystem. Sure, sure, sure. So here I am going through it now because I don't like having that hole in my heart, that hole in my acumen, if you will. What do you, what do you think of it? Uh, it's hard. Like that's the weird thing I wasn't expecting, and I don't know if it's just getting used because the DS, the DS yeah, is you're so playing on the DS. The DS is so strange to hold for me, you know what I mean? But it's like I am getting my ass handed to me, and I'm only like World Two because really? I'm not because I'm not really putting in a lot of work to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I was yeah, gonna I play it on the plane instead. I watch movies, so that didn't happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disconcerted that you find it that hard in World Two. But, but it's funny because then Nick, while we're at RTX, took my DS and put on uh, Super Mario 3D Land on DS, right? And I have like 42 lives, and I'm a million, and it's like. I don't know why that obviously my Mario story, I talk about the Game Boy one, right? And the, sure, I played that and I enjoyed it and I remember having fun. But the one I fell in love with where I became a Mario fan was Super Mario World. Sure. And that was the one I knew inside, outside, da da da. And it felt so perfect. It's very inspired and by some, Mario 3. And that's the thing. Something about Mario 3 doesn't feel that way. So it's almost like learning again to be Mario, if that makes sense. Sure. I mean, I think that Mario 3 was. At the time, really, really, really special. Yeah. And still is a special game. But it is, it doesn't hold a torch or a candle, I should say, to Mario World at all. Um, but one begat the other. Like, sure. Absolutely. Um, I feel like I don't. F Mario 3 is definitely harder than Mario World. I still think probably the original Mario and Mario, like real Mario 2, or, like lost levels, are probably still sure. the hardest Mario. Oh, game sure, 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 sure. If you play them like without cheating. Um, Based on just a lot of like hit detection shit, and like you only really have one hit. Like, so if you have a fire flower, like you don't just become big Mario, you become little Mario. I mean, there's a lot yeah, of like, yeah. little design choices in the original Mario that that made it very difficult. But um, Mario Three is is a seminal NES game. Sure. Um, and I was surprised you played it not because I knew you were a Sega kid, but my my assumption with games like that, like tentpole kind of games, and that was that's. Maybe the biggest game of all on NES in yeah. terms of sales. Yeah. Um, except for Tetris. Well, no, Tetris on NES actually didn't sell. Game Boy really. Sold. Yeah, Game Boy was the one. Uh, although Tetris, Tension Tetris, and Nintendo Tetris sold respectably on NES. But um, my assumption was that everyone had played that game. Sure. Um, now I don't think the game's hard enough where you should be struggling on World Two, which indicates to me that because the game doesn't really ramp up until like World Five, maybe. Yeah. So I, I think that. It's probably something to do with you playing on DS. I'd be interested if you'd play it on the NS original or just on Wii U. Yeah. With a with a sideways Wiimote. Sure. Um, see how you feel about it then. I think that game's really, really fucking fun. But yeah, Super Mario World. I'm, I'm doing wrong. I'm having fun with it and I'm not frustrated and like put it down. I hate this game. I mean, I've put an afternoon at the bar in with it. You know sure. what I mean? And that was the thing of like you get towards the end there and I was just like, ah, oh, and then I'm out of lives and I have to restart and go through and I'm like, you I I mean for me, honestly, it's still learning a lot of like I put I put out a tweet that people were like, what are you talking about? Trying to learn the logic of chain chomps. Because I'm like, oh, he's coming right at me. So if I just jump over and then I do it and he would jump I wasn't even there. Why are you going at that? You know I'm like I I have to stop back, sit back and be like what the fuck is this guy up to? Right. What's his game? Where's he going? You know what I mean? Like that's just stuff you take for granted. You, gotta, you gotta wait for the execute and then you jump over. Yeah, but I, but I did that, and I was and again. This isn't getting hung up on shame chops. I'm just saying that they weren't shooting in the initial directions I thought they'd be shooting. Sure. Weird. Yeah, they, you have to, the, the chain chomps I know from Mario 64, or even yeah, Mario World. I remember being like, oh, these guys are chumps. No big deal. You gotta just have a parabola over them, basically. Yeah. Um. 
No, I hear you. I mean, the, the games for me, I mean, when I really think about... Oh, and these fucking, these, these guys that hide, the desert blocks that hide, yeah. that, and then they come at you? These motherfuckers. Nah, they're not a big deal. They're not, but you got to learn where they are and what they... I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's all memory. I walk up to them. I'm like, are you going to be a real block? Oh, you're a fucking jumping bean too. That's a memorization thing, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Much like Mega Man or something like that. You just remember... After a while, you just remember. I mean, how many times have we all... You know, many of us gone through Mario 3. Yeah. Until you just remember it. Um, When I think about games that I haven't played, I feel like they're all basically on PC because I feel like I... I feel like I um, have a pretty solid and well-rounded experience on console since the, the 2600 all the way through even me, there's a lot of shit on master system i have not played obviously sure. uh genesis i mean i feel like i've played most of the games that matter on genesis and sure. I, don't, I don't again i mean i've said it many times i don't feel like that list is huge yeah um saturn's a pretty huge blind spot for me just because i only you know i knew people like my brothers were made had it and we played games on it but I, i'm sure there's games on there i missed but i, I think that the by the time I could, you know, I had Dream... Every, basically, I've had every console since the Dreamcast. Every one of them. So, with the exception of... Or access to them. All of them. So, of any, you know, the mainstream ones. I mean... Yeah. Uh, but on PC, I mean, the, the my my glaring weak spot on PC is almost everything. You know? Um, but specifically, I'm thinking about, like, the 1980 to 1995 era or so. Okay. So, I feel like there's a lot of gaming genetic stuff like like really important stuff on on pc that i know and i've read extensively about but i've not played the games that come to mind are like ultima uh like all the ultima games yeah um which were heavily inspired by D, which heavily inspired final fantasy and dragon quest so i mean there's there's a, a blind spot there a lot of adventure games because i really don't find adventure games fun at all um are and by adventure games i don't mean like gone home so much as i mean because i do like gone home as much as i mean like just like full throttle and yeah it's like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. jesus christ like i just i just Day don't the tentacle yeah it's just like no thanks like yeah. I, I don't understand the excitement about these games god yeah. bless you if you like them yeah we love tim schaefer we yeah. love his work good for him oh, no, yeah definitely. you play these things i'm just like i don't even know like this I isn't fun I like grim fandango even the remake i was like Ugh. yeah i don't get it yeah i don't get it um so that I was always very turned off by those games. Now I played like the Maniac Mansion, like fucking port on NES. That's not really the real one. Sure, stuff like that. But th- there's a pretty huge gap that I'd like to go back and fill at some point for um, some of those early WRPGs and um, and adventure games. I-, I think that's what sticks out to me um, the most. I mean, if we're talking about games that I fucked around with, I mean. Games that I've not really beaten all the way through, that but that I'm familiar with or I've fucked around with in some sure. capacity, probably Half Life would probably be like that. That whole series is probably uh, a huge gap for me. Do you too. enjoy it? Yeah, it's just like it's on PC. Like I just, it's I just, didn't enjoy it. Like I've tried so hard with Half Life, and like Damon was like, I remember because they were you know people beating this drum when Orange Box came out, and I was playing on 360, and they were like, oh, I don't like it. Well, at least play Half Life Two. It's better than Half Life One. I'm playing Half Life. I'm like, I don't this just sucks i don't enjoy how this feels sure i, I everyone's like the story is so good i'm like yeah but the gameplay sucks sorry like it just doesn't it isn't fun to play like i'm driving these fucking goddamn jeeps around or whatever these like, like go-karts i'm getting uh, i passed some guy i gotta turn around and go fight him i got goddamn guys on top of roofs shooting at me and i got the fucking head crab coming like, right. yeah i think i just never had the fortitude to really this was before the orange box like really uh, fuck with down. it for very much yeah. long, very long. I had PC gamer friends and stuff. I mean, and and you're introduced to these games, you see them, and you fuck with them a little bit. And I'm just like, ah, just. And by the time you know when Orange Box came out, which I think was in 2007, uh, right when I had really first started IGN, I was there maybe six months when Orange Box came out. Um, the PS3 port was awful. The Xbox totally 360 broken, port yeah. was well, was what it was, but I was still like very much in Wii mode at that point. So by yeah. the time, so by the time like I got back around to really like acknowledging the, the fact that the Wii sucked. I, it was just too late. Too I was late. Like, was like other was things. Done. Yeah, it's just like well, there's I'm like there's other things I want to play, and I sure. just never, I just never cared enough to go back. Now here, here's a question related to what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. You're talking about yeah, you know, other things that come around, so on and so forth. Are we to the point, or are we at the precipice of the point? You think where we're talking about? I can't believe these omissions in our library and da da. Is that ever going to go away? I feel like there's so many games now. Every Tuesday, every day on Steam, every indie, every and I know you're gonna scoff it off, but every mobile game that like the games that yeah. you try to play, Monument Valley and all these things that are doing amazing things that I haven't played and I have no intention of playing and I don't I don't think about it 
like I think about Mario 3, like I thought about Super Metroid, like I thought about, oh shit, these are games that people look back and define as their defining like video game moment, and I have no experience with them. Yeah, I think it's a it's it's, it's going to be a hindsight thing. I think a lot of these games that we, even since the time we worked at IGN in the very beginning, I just don't think a lot of these games are old enough for me to care yet. Sure. It's not to say that they're not great. I mean, there are great games that are must plays in those, but I'm not like I don't have enough distance between them to be like, what are the games that I really like fucking missed? Yeah. As opposed to games that just passed us by, which I think are two different things. To your point about mobile gaming and stuff like that, listen, like, look, look, that's not a real gaming platform to me. And to you, I, though. No, but I, I want to just explain, I just want to sure. explain uh, where I'm coming from with this. That mobile gaming has been destructive to the kinds of games that we like. The, 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 the volume of them. The way people play those games, the fucking way they're marketed, the way that the way that the pe- they nickel and dime people or whatever. So, if you like those kinds of games, that's more power to you. That's fantastic. But like that, those are, that's not even a platform that I acknowledge as something mm. that like is so like PC and console and handheld is it? There's like not a fourth pillar. There's not a fourth leg. You know. And so I'm not saying that is like if you like those games, more power to you. But this like, is your opinion it, it, exactly. But what I'm trying to say is like. I'm overwhelmed enough with the games I miss without having to think about a platform that I feel like has been largely destructive anyway. And that I, I disagree. Don't, I don't that think it's I don't, been destructive. That I, don't, that I don't really destroy. How, how, how hasn't it been? How, I mean, you're what? You're saying microtransactions are destructive? Yeah, just like everything about... I don't want to say everything about because I don't know. I'm not familiar enough sure. with the whole fucking breadth of catalog of, of mobile games. But everything about the, what I've seen about them has been trying to be driven into the way we play and the way we market and the way we monetize core games. And I think that's a huge fucking problem. You know, I don't think there's I don't think there's a goddamn thing that console gaming can learn from from playing a game on iOS at all. Mm-hmm. I think it goes the other way. And so yeah, I'm, I'm, I stand by that 100. percent When I want to just pay you 15 dollars for a game, but I can't because you have to have these microtransactions. It didn't start on console. Sure, you know, but I mean? it hasn't. It hasn't really worked on console either. No, but it's still here. It is. You well, know? sure, but I mean, those are just shitty products. I wouldn't want to play anyway. You if, know what I mean? If they're if that's going to take down a shitty console game, then I didn't want to play it to begin with. If you're going to be nickel and diming going out there, sure. I, I mean, I, the, the benefit of mobile gaming, I think, is and granted, they kind of came up together. But stick with me is the fact that. It opened up the door for indies. You know, it was the first place where it was for 99 bucks, you're a game developer and go try something and go do something and get your feet wet and learn. I mean, look at like Mitchell Morgan, look at learn code. How are you going to make an app? How are you going to do this? And then you can start wrapping your head around making a video game, which I think you saw Sony and Microsoft respond to in terms of how to get their platform into people's hands and lower the development costs and get people kits and do these different things. Yeah, now, I mean- granted, Steam was there. Totally the green light program. They were indie games were happening there as well. But I think part of the groundswell is mobile. I guess. I I I mean, there's a, certainly a point to be made there, but I do think that mobile gaming is a race to the bottom. It's a a, a question of volume. It's a question of iteration. It's a question of copying. It's a question of like all these kinds of things. There's like no, like. For all of the games that are on mobile that seem like there's love put into them, there's many more that aren't. There's no there's no quality sure. control. There's just no respect for the gamer. But I think you know, but- and like and that and I'm sorry, like I stand by that. Like I don't the the revolution that we thought was happening in 2008, 2009, 2010, where it was like that was like what was going to be the future has not panned out because yeah. that doesn't resonate with people that actually care about games. That's that's like the bottom line to me. And I was so happy. You know, like oh, yeah, when, me too. When, Don't get me wrong. I didn't want that shit to become the future. Because when I remember, I remember saying, I remember saying on Bo- Co- Podcast Beyond many years ago, I was like, if that is the future and that's the way we're playing games, I no longer play video games. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if there's a touch screen and it's a all, touch screen yeah, and yeah. it's just all gimmicky and nonsense. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. Like, it's just, it's not a judgment on those games per se or the people that make those games per se or the people that play those games per se. It's just to say, like, I take gaming seriously and that platform doesn't. And so, like that, and that, that's, the, I mean, like. My whole pro- my one part problem with the argument is I feel like it's baby out with the bathwater kind of thing. Is that, yeah, there's a ton of shit in there, but isn't that the same thing of like looking back? And granted, don't get me wrong, Atari took it on the chin and all these other things, but when they were making games like ET and there were this stuff, there were good games in there too, but there was a wealth of shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to take away and say that m- the platform is destructive and totally fucked up and it's all on that when it's really a, a set of bad apples ruining it for the bunch. Yeah, but it's like, it's, uh, I would. Uh, I, again, I don't disagree. That might, that, that, that's a, a decent analogy, except for the fact that I think that the diamonds in the rough are the exception. You know, and sure. I, and, no, and I, that's not even. I don't even think that's a, a thought. I think by fucking numerals. You know what I mean? If we're looking at the numbers and the lists and the quantity of games put out there and the numbers that are 
uh, swor- swords and sorcery or whatever. No, that's not right. You know, um, damn it. Whatever. One of the amazing fucking games Marty always likes that I never play. But you know what I mean? Like the ones that are new experiences and doing something. Republic will say, all right, you know what I mean? Like, yes, there are games that are thought out and done this and that's how they're trying to be. But then, yeah, there are overwhelming loads of but shit Re- and clones and fucks. But Republic is a, is a, is a game with co- like with console uh, sensibilities uh, sensibilities and will be coming to those platforms yeah well presumably. finally i think yeah because you know they, they realized they needed to make more money probably. yeah because you realize that you put your game out that's the thing is that there's a deficit of trust on these platforms and reasonably so like think about the golden era of gaming to me is always going to be the nes era and i don't think that's a huge coincidence it's not to say there wasn't bad there was really bad games on nes oh, but yeah. nintendo was smart enough to learn from atari and be like you can only publish five games a year that's it yeah so you better figure out which games you want to publish and that created that created shell companies, but it also created a uh, a really vibrant ecosystem of great games. You had to believe in your product. Exactly. And when platform holders don't believe that there needs to be any sort of spigot where they can shut things on and off and be like, well, this game sucks. Why would we ever want to have it on? Apple and, and Google like don't care. They don't care. You know? Yeah. And as long as they don't care, I don't care. And the one thing that really bothers me about mobile gaming specifically is like how people read into numbers about mobile gaming. Like everyone plays games now. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like not all games are created equal and not all gaming is created equal. It's not again a judgment if that's how you want to spend your time. It's just to say like we learned, we, we had all this anecdotal nonsense about how many gamers are out there now and they're playing games on Facebook and they're playing, you know, Zynga's making these games and, yeah. and mo- like look at them now, you know? Yeah. Like th- some of these companies don't even exist anymore. The iOS and, and and Android seem to exist on the same fucking five or ten games over and over again, just people dumping money into these games. Meanwhile, other people just release their games on these platforms, and they don't matter. So I have no idea how the fuck we even got on this train of thought. But but uh, it's it's <laughs> gaming omissions. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. Well, no, I mean what I originally said was that I don't I don't count this as a platform sure, sure, where sure, there sure, are sure. omissions because there are games that I love. But I'm saying on iOS like like Plants vs Zombies. Sure, but that game, came out uh, of- game dev story. Yeah, like whatever, whatever the games are. But I mean, like, come on, guys. Like, the, like, until these platforms start taking their games more seriously, I have no interest in taking their games seriously. Because sure. it's not even necessarily about the, ta- the lack of tactile control, which is a huge problem too. But um, it's more a lack of like just respect for the consumer. Sell me my game. You know, make yeah. a game that's that you believe in that's good. Stop racing to the bottom, making everything free and fucking nickel and diming people. People don't core gamers don't respect that. I am a core gamer and I don't respect it. And I don't respect the platforms that those games come from. You know? So yeah. it's just See, I, I'm with you on not respecting it, but I don't respect the developers, not the platform. The platform is just a fucking machine to me, whereas it's the developers behind it that are doing their different things. Well, let me ask you this question, because sure. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, and who knows like what the future might hold. Do you think that your favorite game of all time in uh, ten years no. will be on that? No. Do you think it ever could be? Because I don't, I just don't think it's possible. You know, like I just don't, I just don't, I just don't think that the, it's, it's, you know. I think it's possible. I think, I think when you, I, I mean, like when we're talking about processing power and all this other shit that'll come in VR and how, I mean, like there's a million unknowns and who knows what's around the next corner in terms of technology. But I do, I think it is, I don't want to look at this platform and think of it in the way I still think old people look at video games and they think nes i don't want to look down the line now and be old and think about oh it's a mobile game and think about fucking uh some touch team match three puzzle garbage i don't know what it's going to become just like i don't think people who were wrote off video games as mario don't know what they became sure but do you would you i think just hypothetically yeah consoles disappeared vita is obviously done i mean these these handhelds disappear yeah do you think that you would play games anymore I mean, I would play far fewer games. It would, and I mean, that would be the thing of like, now that, but like what you're talking about is like, I think it's very simple to think of it like a light switch. All of a sudden, everything we love's gone and this is what exists and the, everything's fucked because it would be, right? Like we wouldn't, where would you go for, but like in reality, if that was what started to verge and move off, then you'd have sites like IGN be yeah, actually telling you what's good. And there'd be gatekeepers that rise up. You know what I mean? Similar to what happened in the way of like, fan f- fan zines that then became egm and fan sites that then became ig you know what i mean like there'd be a new class that rises up with it to be the gatekeepers and keep these people honest whereas right now yeah nobody gives a fuck yeah and that's a huge problem and i also think there's just a limited capability of these machines it's not even about sure. processing power it's just it's a, it is about control and input you can't if like i, I think they released Mega Man 2 on on iphone like, that's a joke you know what I mean? Like that's a jump sorry, that's a joke. You can't there's certain games that you can't play. Like it's fine playing Final Fantasy VI or Dragon Quest, it's just turn yeah. based and yeah. whatever you move around on the screen. I, I totally support that, but like there's also just a limited array of genres that can be on there and no one's figured it out in the sense of like a massive fucking crazy commercial success. And I just 
the the reason I bring this up is because the way people were talking about mobile gaming a few years ago was a cataclysm. It was going to be the was, next was, thing. It was going to put and, everything and, out, and, and it was going to be it. it. It was it was supposed to be cataclysmic, and it, and it was supposed to be cataclysmic for our core gaming sensibilities. And like I said, that was when I was like, "Fuck this!" Like my days are numbered in this industry because I'm not, yeah. I'm not, no. Like I'm just not accepting. You're done that. with it, yeah, yeah. And we've seen the exact opposite. These consoles are selling. Well, not Wii U, but PS4 and Xbox One are selling meteorically. Yeah. The games are still bold and ambitious. I also think PC obviously is clearly the biggest viable platform for new games and new ideas. And PC might be the most exciting because there's just a, dump, a bunch of different ways to have input. Whether it's it's your keyboard, whether it's your mouse, whether it, it could be voice or video, it could be VR, it could be whatever it is. I'm not saying anyone's taking advantage of voice or video, but I'm saying sure. there's all sorts of shit you can do on PC and and conceivably on consoles. We've talked about this before, you know that we I. Come out here and I'm all bullish on consoles and I I fucking talk shit about PCs and other and I'm clearly joking and playing it up. PC is the perfect platform. It is if 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 consoles weren't where they are right now. If this console generation we're in right now, PS4 and Xbox One weren't such a runaway success, in Valve, in my opinion, wouldn't have fucked up Steam Machine. They could have easily taken over. It would have been done because you know like we just got our volume codes right, but we only got them for PC. They're working on PS. Uh, uh, PlayStation and it's like oh man I really wanted to play this and I'm playing and I'm like well you know what my PC can actually run it and I could pack a controller and be done with it and then I could also output that to my TV and I could put it in big picture mode and I could just move the tower out there and, t- and it's like I could do all these things to make the PC be the only thing but I'm already so anchored both in nostalgia and trophies and digital libraries and this community that I love that I'm like well no I'm going to stick with PlayStation because that's like what I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like PC has all the parts. P- and I really thought that Valve was going to come in and be like, boom, Steam machine. There's one. This is how it works. And it's going to your home and it's going to be there and it's going to, you don't need anything else. You never need it. I mean, like you don't need another gaming machine. You know what I mean? Like we've made it simple. Finally, PC gaming is simple and this will run the games that are important right now. And instead they were like, Hey, fuck it. Everybody can make a steam machine. And there's 14 versions yeah, and they, they range they, from a hundred dollars to 15,000. They dropped the ball. And I think that they dropped the ball because they'd never really wanted the ball in their hands to begin with. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they had no interest in being yeah, I hardware. Think, I just don't think they care. Which I get, but it's just no one came along to be like, we we get hardware and we want to be in that hardware business and we can sell this to you. UK they couldn't because you know unless they were endorsed by yeah. Steam in some official way. I think yeah. this all brings up just an interesting point that conventional wisdom in gaming and we've well, I've been wrong many times about the things that I've said b- before in the past, of course, too. But conventional wisdom about the ebbs and flows of gaming have just been totally fucking wrong right. for for years. Right. right. PC gaming was fucking dead as fucking the day is long. You know, yeah, in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, like, like every, that was just you getting, that was a huge. They were joke. getting bad ports and yeah. like nothing. Yeah, and yeah. it was like no support. And, you know, the consoles were gonna die because uh, mobile gaming was gonna take over and stuff like that, and the Minecraft generation is gonna ruin the, the ability to buy and 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 manufacture AAA games. Now, there's like there's all sorts of shifts. Yeah, there are there are massive shifts. I mean, yeah. AAA space is shrinking, and there's no middle space anymore. But there's yeah. a, there's a vibrant indie space which you claim, or and I think rightfully so, m- might have been incubated somewhat on phones. I still think that we we just don't know what's going to happen. All I know is how I want to play and experience games. Yeah. And I feel like everyone looked at these phones and tablets as just gaming machines for a lot of people and I'm like they're not. They're app machines. Yeah. And if you and there's a huge difference between an app and a game. It's not to say you can't play and enjoy and make good games on these things. It's just to say these are not the be all end all platforms. And I, we, I didn't mean to go on this huge rant about or this is a conversation this is a great about mobile podcast. gaming, but it's just it is. Tim's but, not here to be a fuckwad as usual and fuck sure, it all up. Sure, oh, sure. Boy, oh, man. Uh, but I just, but to me, it's just like yeah. So like I, I just don't look at these platforms as something that I give a shit about, and like I'll be shocked if I ever do. Yeah. Like I, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like I always have, you know, I have my, my iPhone in my pocket now. I have my tablet my, and all those things, but I just don't. I just, and even when these touch games come to something like Vita. It's like I'll play some of these games. Like I played that game Nun Attack and yeah. um, there's Men's like Room sh- Mayhem, Men's Room Mayhem, and stuff like that. And, and I'm did like, did you ever play Jetpack Joyride on PS4? Uh, yeah, well, I did a let's play with it on yeah. uh, with uh, um, with Tim. But it's like these aren't these aren't like these are, sixty hour experiences. Yeah, and they're yeah, just yeah. like not even that good. You know, yeah. I'm sorry. Like they're great. There's to nothing time wasters. Yeah, exactly. But I'm like, there's nothing. There's nothing inspired about an endless runner. You know, like like. Even the genres we've been given by these things, you know, are like, yeah. are, it's just like, what is this? You know, like, what is the genre? Now, you love your Race the Sun, though. I do like Race the Sun, but Race the Sun has a point. The Race the Sun's not really an endless runner. I, I mean, know. it's, 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 it's thoughtful, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I just think that I, I want, 
I want some evidence that positive things are happening from these platforms that benefit games and gamers. And all but, I'm seeing is the benefit of the same fucking few companies like King putting out the same fucking games, I claiming seeing, that everyone plays games because they play these games. Sure. And then that's and then that's the that's projected are, on our industry. The benefits are, you know, just like they are on consoles, that there are indie people out there doing cool indie things. And you know what I mean? That are doing games and mobile games in a way we would have never thought about. And like again, few and far between. I understand what we're saying. Yeah, and they should go somewhere where people are going to notice. Agreed with that. And, I'm not and that's saying why that's most play, of them do. And I'm not saying that's PlayStation or Xbox or Nintendo. I'm saying that's probably PC. <laughs> I think most end up there too. Yeah. And then later, years later, get ported to PlayStation Four. Anyway, and I probably pissed some people spot. off with my my mobile gaming rant. Although they're, probably they're, not. I they're not watching this. No one. Who, there are no. I mean, there's. I don't. I don't even know mobile defenders. The people who used to cover mobile stuff for us. I don't know them to come out of the woodwork and argue with us about any of the points they've made. And yeah, how this, the history's gone. It's just a shame because I do believe in a level of platform agnosticism where it's like if a good game comes to a platform, you should probably play it if you're interested in it. Yeah. That was an example. You know, Gears was always an example Gears. of that with me on Xbox or obviously a lot of Nintendo first party stuff. You know, when I played Gone Home on PC or I really fell in love with yeah. Civilization V, there's a common theme between those games. They can't be played on a phone or a tablet. And there's another common theme between uh, all of the platform agnosticism is that. I can't imagine being excited about anything on that platform, you know? Sure. I hope someone proves me wrong one day, yeah. you know? Yeah. But when people were talking about, like, Monument Valley and all these games, I'm like, whatever. Yeah. You know, like, whatever. You know, I'm not, and that's not a, that's not a, that's not a, uh, that's not a, a, a casting a pall on that game specifically or that studio. I don't know anything about that game. I don't sure, know sure, 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 sure. I'm just like. It was good enough for Francis Underwood. Based on, but based on how many times I was burned and have been witnessed other people get burned on these platforms where sure. they just want to play. It's like that's just turned me off to the experience. It's like it's like to say we were talking about with PlayStation Network in the last uh, in the last segment. If you had really bad experiences with PlayStation over and over and over again, would you really give a fuck if anyone said that there was a good game on PS4 you should play? No, Probably exactly not. not. Yeah, that, and that's where it comes with the PC thing, where the drivers right. and the problems. Which I've is had a real problem. Thing. I hate when people deflect that because that that mm. is a real problem. I, and it happens to me every time I try to use a game. It happens not, to not anymore, but back in the day. Well, Steam has kind of unified things and made things easier. And I yeah. I think Steam is so very impressive. Like I, awesome. I think. When I fuck around on Steam, there's only a few games I play on Steam, but when I, when I and, and, and you know, very few and far between because we're just so busy with other things, but always very impressed with that platform. Yeah. They can learn. That's why I wanted them to win. I wanted them to, Steambox to be awesome and be the reason that I would go, fuck, maybe I will unplug everything and just use this. Yeah, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't no. to be. They, they, this, Valve is so weird. They're a weird company. Yeah. We can spend a whole, I mean, because I, I don't know a great deal about them. One of the things I wanted to do when I was at IGN, when I was still writing my history of C series, was I was, I was, uh, looking into in a very preliminary way with with just you know me and, and kind of talking to some people about you know doing the history of valve and it was it was i was i wanted to do because i thought it would d done really well i wanted to do it because i was also really fucking curious about it myself oh yeah yeah learn a lot about and them. even if i could have just gone there for a week and talked to them and not written anything i would have done it but sure um yeah they 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 just they're very insular and they just seem like they don't really care and i, I don't really i don't and i don't mean that in uh, an apathetic way either i just think that they're like our product's good and we don't really need to do anything else. yeah we don't need to worry about what people we don't need to make about. games and we don't need to yeah it's like this thing with half-life 3 it's like i think half-life 3 will happen but i think that th that's not a priority to them yeah that unlike everything else they do that could it's not going to lose money but they, when they look at development costs and all these kinds of things like this is an investment we don't have to make yeah yeah so i digress all right i hear you on that i still one. have no idea how the fuck we started on that conversation Gaming omissions. I, 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 I mentioned Super Mario, and you you went off. It was just crazy. Nobody understood it. Topic number three comes from Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. This is from David Ng. He supports us there enough to get his topic read Thank automatically you, on the show. And David's topic is this. Oh Jesus. <laughs> We got to meet Greg and Christine at San Diego Comic-Con last year and chatted with them a little bit about our video game wedding and reception. My wife manually did up amazing 8-bit art invitations. The wedding ceremony ended up relatively standard fare, just with procession music from Journey, Zelda, and Uncharted. But for our reception, we decorated the hall and desserts with video game characters. We managed to get Ma Mark Meir to do our introductions as Commander Shepard, got a bunch of old-school arcade machines and iCades, and had two massive Mario Kart and Street Fighter Grand Tournaments. Winners won a single five-pound gummy bear and instant diabetes. We were so happy to see everybody, young and old, having such a great time playing video games. My question is this. Would you guys have any video games at your wedding? What do you think about such themed weddings? Video game themed weddings. Video game themed weddings. Uh, I mean, I, I, this, this reminds me a lot of the name 
topic that we did about video game names, right? Like, uh, yeah, 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 where you're like, don't name your kid Khaleesi. Just, just, just and by the way, uh, Harper Lee's book, the, the sequel to Atticus. To Kill a Mockingbird, yeah, is a did you fucking... Read it? No, I haven't read okay, it. Okay. Great example. You know? Just throwing it out there, it's totally unrelated. Now, Boo Bradley comes back and he's horrible. Yeah, and he's, <laughs> a, and he's Satan. <laughs> um, you want to name a kid Boo Bradley? But... Uh, Boo Bradley? Is that from... It's Boo Radley, right? Not Bradley. Boo yeah, Radley. Radley, I yeah. think, yeah. But I, what you're saying reminds me of um, Mr. Deeds as well. With the uh, how does it always say, come back to Mr. Yeah, Deeds? Yeah, it always comes back to Mr. Deeds. Because when he goes speaking. back to the town, like there's a she says that the guy's name I think is I don't know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Pepper and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, what a, what an awful movie. It's so distracting to me right now. Uh, this is a thing where it's like it's not for me, but if you, that's what you want to do, then sure. more power to you. I, I I personally wouldn't do something like that, but um, it's not to disparage game music or games at all. I mean, we we love and live and breathe games. It's just like I think that the, for me, like, not that I, I don't, I, I assume I might not ever get married, but it should be more about the um, the couple and more about the family and the celebration and a sort of. But if they're both Freer gamers, way. if they're both yeah, gamers, but I feel like it isolates people that aren't well, sure, gamers. Fuck them. But that could be like almost everyone at your wedding. I mean, even fuck think about it. even think about you got married one day, right? Yeah. And and assume the woman you got married is a, a gamer, right? But still think about all the people that would come to your wedding that weren't gamers, and assume see, that if you and assume that if you had a wedding themed on you know whatever the fucking nerdy shit you like, at right, that right, point. right, right, right. Here's and here's what's interesting about it is I think it's interesting to see him and both you, you as you talk about it trying to merge video games with the traditional wedding. Whereas I think if you're gonna go balls out enough that you're gonna have this video game reception and music, and it's gotta be like, why do you do you really want the normal wedding? Like to try to merge in the dresses and the tuxes and that shit to then fit into having a shine behind you and you know <laughs> master chief. So, so you you say like you would just go full bore. Well, I mean, point. my whole thing is like do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. I think a reception with arcade cabinet sounds awesome. You know what I mean? I think yeah, having that option is cool. I'm just whole, saying like you, you know I don't need to you know come down the, the aisle as Link or something like that. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I think and like a green tunic. The thing, the weddings that you know stand out to me are the ones that are specific to the person that they're doing something cool that is them you know what i mean and like don't, they, it can totally be something that doesn't speak to me in terms of what they are but when you go to a wedding and it is just another wedding in a church reception at the hotel or whatever you know what i mean like in the dj is playing fucking ymca and all that shit and you're doing the electric slide it's like well this is like every other weird ass wedding you've ever been to sure. i like going to the weddings that have the unique pieces too. sure them. but and i agree i just i mean th th i don't disagree with you i like my whole thing with with this gentleman's question is do whatever you want. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like if that's what makes you happy, that's fun. That's I'm not judging you. I mean, do it, do what you do what makes you happy. Yeah. What I'm just thinking about is like what is you know weddings are almost more about and I hate to say it, but it's true. It just seems like it's more about everyone else. You know, like the ceremony is about the, the the wedding, but when you go to the when you go to the reception, which is really the wedding. Yeah. Uh, to a lot of people, I mean, that's what you're really going to. Yeah. Uh, it's it's about like everyone's enjoyment. You don't want to have like food that's too weird, or you don't want to have like. I was thinking about Nate Ahern's wedding. You know, we went we went to that um, in outside of Philadelphia, which was unique and had you know specific moments. And I was like, oh, this is a cool wedding. Well, what was so cool about it? There was moment. There was a lot that was cool about it. It was outside. It was very um, a fusion of kind of like you know Nate's kind of a you know a white guy and his and his wife's an Indian girl, and so they they fused those those two kind. He's not of, kind of a white guy. Nate is the most white. Yeah, guy. he is the, actually the, he is the white guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they, but they fuse like some Irish traditions with sure. some Indian traditions together in a very pleasant way, in a very accessible way. Then the food at the reception and the drinks were they had like food trucks with with you know, uh, f you know ch Philly cheesesteaks and tacos and all that stuff. Then they had like traditional Indian food. In other words, yeah. it catered to like everybody. Yeah, you know, and yeah, made everyone feel and made really everyone feel comfortable. Yeah, my buddy Mike Pope's getting married. Um, and I, I got to go back to the island for it in just a few weeks and. He's having like kind of more of a woodland themed kind of like wedding because he's like really into like Lord of the Rings and all yeah. these kinds of things. He's always been into that kind of stuff. But again, it's like agnostic, and I hate using that word again in the sense that it's like not Lord of the Rings. It's not, you know, The Witcher. It's sure. just like let's wear like some fucking leather armor for a little while and you know and just and fuck around as if we're in like you know a fantasy setting. So yeah. I like the more like. Are you doing this? Did you already buy? Are you wearing the army set? No, no, no. He's like, <laughs> he's doing some. I don't even want to. I don't. I don't even know exactly what he's doing. But like his whole thing is like, they are having like a big bonfire and they want like someone to shoot an arrow into it to like oh, light dude. it up and stuff. Yeah. And like Mike Pope hit me up. I want to go. <laughs> uh, 
So, but like to me, like that's a themed wedding, but it's not an exclu- Like you have to understand anything. If you've if you've seen anything fantasy based ever, then you understand yeah. it. It's the same thing with with you know Nate. But like that's the thing. So here. I'm just saying. I'm but, just saying that's my that's my stance. I wouldn't be opposed to be attending or enjoying a wedding that was based on something that I didn't understand. I'm just saying that you know in terms of, of see, practicality, pragmatism. Here's my thing: is but I, I think you're. What you're saying about like, oh, this is just the theme of it. You get it and you don't is that it can be applied here, right? Like he's the music is Journey Zelda and Uncharted. So it's instrumental stuff. It's just awesome music. Maybe you don't know it, but who cares? You know what I, I mean? Love, now, can you was when the music played that music played at the ceremony? Procession music, it says. The procession music. Yeah. yeah. So it, when So he, they when walked he, down the aisle to Uncharted. When they when they put the when they put the ring on, they did the didgeridoo like uh, he died. <laughs> and then so they went, no! <laughs> that's nerdy I like that that's funny and itself. then the desserts are video game characters I mean I don't know yeah, okay whatever cool. and like it, Mark it, so Commander Shepard does the announcements I, d- I doubt it was I'm Commander Shepard and these are my favorite wedding people on the Citadel right it's just their voice and then they have the cabinets I went to a wedding for uh, my friend Blair and Casey right and they had a video game area right and they, they, they was like spread out all over the place and it wasn't like Video game shit was all over the place. Don't get me wrong. It was like they had the one arcade area where it's like, oh, go hang out there and have a beer and you know play these games. And they had a, everything and like all these different things, games that mattered to them that you played. But it yeah. wasn't like grandma wasn't forced to go in there and see what the fuck. No, was sure. Up. And I, I think as with most things, I'm probably way over analyzing it. I'm just trying to 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 think about you know people's enjoyment and understanding of what's going on. Sure, it's just, sure. It's just it's relevant. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's not the most important thing. You're paying for the fucking weddings. So, I mean, if you want to have a fucking straight up. Wedding based on World Three and Super Mario Three or something more power too. I'm just saying, like you know, you got to think about everyone else. You yeah, know, that you're inviting and are they going to enjoy it? Are they going to understand it? Are they going to be in on the joke or be in on the fun? Yeah, I think those are you know salient points to be to have, to be made. But yeah, you know, more power to you. I mean, speaking, do, do what you want? You know how you're talking about Mario right there, mm-hmm. World whatever. This is a conversation we haven't had together, and I don't know if you know it because I didn't know. Have you ever seen that viral video? Of the uh, at a talent show, the Mario thing, where they like the kids do it, and he's like jump. It's like set to music, and they're doing all the sound effects and stuff. Is it's a one guy is Mario walking, and he's like jumps up and he's tapping so. the coins. Really? No, I don't think this so. was huge years back, like huge. I remember watching this and being like, this probably, is amazing. Probably, blah, blah, blah. probably, maybe at one point. That's Tim. Like I, I mean, I know since you don't have a real anchor to it for the kids watching, that's Tim. He dropped that in the conversation the other day, and I was like, what? And I'm like, and I pulled it up. I'm like, and he's like, yeah. That's I'm like, what? how the fuck do I not know this about you? Oh, so that is literally Tim. It's You're literally not Tim. That's, that's, like that's anecd- Tim doing an, it. And all an his anecd- dumb anecd- friends in high school. And I remember watching that. It feels like a decade ago, probably a little bit less. But it was just like, what? Like what? Like that blew my mind. Blew my mind the other day. Mm. Interesting. Topic number four, Colin. Okay. I got to make a time code. It's a little after. It's a little after the one hour mark for you, Colin. One hundred one fifty nine. It says. Thank you very much. <laughs> As always, these topics for topic number four are potpourri that come from the community. If you want to be a part of it, go over to kindoffunny.com slash forums. You jump in there. You go to the games cast, and then we have a thing where you go and you post your question. What up, Kev? You remember that you were, you must have been in this thing. Tim's talent show Mario video? No, my mom wouldn't let me take this day off school. Um, I'm really upset about that. Your mom sucks, man. Yeah, yeah. First million views you ever got. Hmm? Yeah, first million views Tim oh. ever got. Anyways, comes from the community. Go there. You push questions. We read them here. Um, Cade Smith 882 says, hey, guys, what do you guys think Naughty Dog should do after they are finished with Uncharted 4? Should they create a new IP or make a sequel to The Last of Us? Now, Colin, you have to assume they're already working on a sequel to The Last of Us. I mean, they are. Yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, Based on comments, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just commercially obvious. I think the, the commercial imperative is on Naughty Dog to make a Last of Us 2 because Last of Us... Sold extraordinarily well. I don't know the exact numbers, but I feel like The Last of Us must have sold better than any Uncharted installment. A- any one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, so they they're going to, to make in. another one. I mean, yeah. that's just that's just obvious. I would, I don't feel, I don't feel like it's necessary. But if it was up to me, I would certainly want them to make more than one more. I feel like that world is ripe for the fucking picking, man. Like I think that that world is way more interesting than any world of Uncharted, even. Um, I, I I don't necessarily think they need to focus on Joel and Ellie. Sure, uh, they can focus, but there's like there's little seeds that were set, like the Fireflies, for instance, like Joel's brother. Who the yeah Joel's brother? Like who the fuck are these people? Yeah, you know? um, like who really are the Fireflies? And so there's like all sort and there's interesting places to see and like what's going on in the rest of the world and it doesn't yeah. have to be in the United States. So that's the thing is like I think with Nathan Drake, right? We're 
theoretically, stick with me, right? We're living in Nathan Drake's world right now. Mm-hmm. He's fucking gallivanting off right now in Costa Rica and doing cool shit while you and I are podcasting. Whereas in The Last of Us, everyone's in a fucked up situation. How are people surviving? What does it look like? Yeah, I think that I think people I think people are looking at it too narrowly in terms of like, well, The Last of Us was great and leave it alone. And I don't necessarily disagree with that sentiment because it's it's very similar. We we're talking about True Detective. Uh, the first season of True Detective was phenomenal, and I only watched the first episode of the, le- the second season of True Detective, and I fucking hated it, and I never yeah. watched any of it. And lo and behold, everyone fucking hates it. Yeah, yeah. and it's like sometimes you need to leave, you know, leave well things alone. Yeah, yeah. Leave just well let, let alone. it have just the leave, legacy just, it deserves. Yeah, just leave it alone. But with The Last of Us, it's more like it was about Joel and Ellie, obviously, but it was really about that world too, and and yeah. the ramifications of that world and what happens in that world. And I would love, I would love to look back in fifteen years and have them make a few more on The Last of Us games, and and. Not necessarily even them, if they that there's another developer that they trust to do it, where it would be fun to see and interesting and harrowing to see other people's experiences and what would be really cool. And this is a Last of Us spoiler. We'll put our hand down when the spoiler's over. It would be cool if each each uh, game started before the event, before the fall. Oh, dialing farther and farther back, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. like gives you context about why things happen the way they happen. Mm, that'd be interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of years there. there. It, it, exactly. In other words, in other words, there's a theme between all the games. The only hook between the games is the is the shared world and the shared experiences and that they all show you what happened before and what happened to those people after. I think mm-hmm. that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can but, see that. Pers- here's what am I hung up on. I, I, I talk about the last episode and I, I'd love for it to be left alone because I, I feel like if there's a studio that can get us... And I don't mean to, I don't I hate comparing us to movie uh, video games to movies. You know what I mean? Like I don't like that. I don't like that whole argument. But like there is something to be learned there in the fact that Martin Scorsese can make another Martin Scorsese film, and they don't. It, it isn't Casino Two. You know what I mean? Like I mean, everyone does sequels or whatever. Can do they can do whatever the fuck they want. But if you have something to say, say it. You know what I mean? If they want to say something, what we're talking about, and they want to go make. You figure right now it'd be so preposterous to play as anybody else in Last of Us. You couldn't imagine it. But if they do it once and they blow it up, and it is. The Last of Us universe, the Last of Us cinematic video game universe, then you start going, oh, okay, well, now I can imagine all these different... I still want to play Ishmael's story. You know what I mean? There's so many different things I want to fucking do in that world. But right now, I also do want to see video game companies and publishers not be afraid of sequels. And Last of Us was really the first time in a while, I feel like, where it was like, hey... The guys who brought you Uncharted are making this game, and boom, it's a huge success. Thank you. The system works. That we can have artists who create things, and they don't have to keep creating the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think Naughty Dog has an interesting advantage, too, which is that a lot of developers don't have. I, I, f- I feel like you can count on one hand the amount of developers that have this advantage, which is that people will buy anything they put out. Like, they've earned such respect that The Last of Us sold based not only on its great reviews, but... Sold based on the fact that it was a Naughty Dog game. If, yeah. if that, if that, if the last one was made by Sony Bend or something like that, no disrespect to those guys because we love them too. N- people would have been much more skeptical, and then would have sold later, yeah, and longer if, if after the reviews came out. But people were excited about the Last of Us because it was a Naughty Dog game, right. because it was a new IP, and I and I and I respect that. But I don't. There's something sacred about the new IP, but there's also something sacred about exploring, not being afraid to explore things that need to be explored more. Like Uncharted Four is probably the last Uncharted game, at least from Naughty Dog, and I think that sucks. Why can't Uncharted exist forever? Like, if, if you feel like, if you feel like you can say something meaningful, it doesn't have to be. It's just, in other words, it's not just like shitting it out because sure. it's an Uncharted game. But sure. it's saying like, why limit yourself? Like, Drake can never have another story after this. Why not? You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's it goes both ways. I think studios and publishers don't, and especially publishers, don't invest in games to be one offs, and they shouldn't because the beauty of games is that. It's about interacting with the world, it's about interacting with characters and interacting with something that that might mean something or be greater, or maybe it's stupid and it doesn't mean anything at all, but you have fun playing it. And I think that that's something uniquely games, and I feel like what gets me excited about The Last of Us 2, which is inevitable, is think about Drake's fortune and then think about Among Thieves. Like, that's all you need to think about. Yeah, the leap there. Like, there's a massive fucking massive leap between those two games. Yeah. Significant. And they can do the same thing with this game, you know. And yeah. I think that they will. I, I I think just knowing what Naughty Dog's capable of, knowing that we know those guys personally over there, we know a lot of those people at that studio, and we know what they're made of. And I think that I think that um, the Last of Us Two, like the la- people should 
unlike a lot of other game sequels where you get a little bit of trepidation or whatever, I think we go into The Last of Us 2 expecting it to be even better than The Last of Us. And I think that not only do we expect that, I think that it's entirely possible and maybe even likely. Oh, yeah, sure. You know? So it's if that's the case, then why not? I mean, it's the same reason why I'm excited about Uncharted 4, because it, it, the worlds are different. It's much more grounded. It's pulpy and all that kind of stuff. And you can, But I, I do feel like Drake is a character that can transcend time. I feel like Uncharted can even exist without Nathan Drake one day. And I feel like it's like, it's like what do you... And I, I we we identify him with the with the series and rightfully so. But think about like something like James Bond, or in other words, you have a story that you want to tell, and you have a, a world and a theme. Yeah, yeah. But Bond can be many different people, you know. And sure, so, but and I mean, so like, and, he's and, still Bond, right? Exactly. But Drake can still be Drake. Like, why not have a different Drake? Why not have his son? Why not have you know like something else or, or a story that focuses on different characters in that world? All I'm saying is that we shouldn't necessarily be trepidatious just for the sake of being trepidatious. We should be excited that people might be able to explore things that are good over and over again like they did with Castlevania for instance back in the day or like they did on the NES with Mega Man or like they've done with Zelda or Mario like these games are like there really are no bad Mario games sure you know yeah they change but like Mario was always in a lot of people's minds 2D side scrolling or 3D mm-hmm. and there's no bad Mario games you know unless you count like Mario is missing or something like that and but Sunshine. I mean in terms of core Mario games and Mario Sunshine Mario Sunshine's fantastic so I don't know. I just want to throw that out there that I understand the trepidation about new IP and exploring different things. But you have to all understand that we can get good things when we really bury them, like bury ourselves in a, in a sequel or in a, or in a third game. Sure. Because the, the the tale is always the same, Greg. We've been in this industry for a long time. And you know the tale is as old as this fucking industry, which is there's the first game in a series is never what they wanted it to be. Oh God, no! They have to cut so much and do so many different things. The second game is always the result of what they wanted to do. Yeah. Always. Always. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sure. But it always worked with Naughty Dog. Yeah. Rosso Mo says, hi, guys. With Persona 4 Dancing All Night being published by Atlas in North America, but NIS America in Europe and Bandai Namco in Australia, why doesn't Atlas publish everywhere and do these splits? Do these split rights affect us gamers? That's just a money thing. It's a yeah, money it's and like, reach. It, and sp- yeah. Business. I, I mean, this isn't... The, I mean, Atlas and NIS have been splitting regional publishing for a long time yeah um a lot of atlas games native atlas games came to europe by nis so it's just a reach thing atlas it's a little weird now because you have to assume it was partly because of atlas's lack of reach and maybe a lack of funds because you have to you have to spend a lot of money to publish your games and then you recoup it later so they might not have had the funds now that they're owned by sega you would think that they would be able to skip this shit but you have to understand too that these deals might have been in place for a long time Long be- oh, excuse me, long before Sega was, you know, purchased Atlas. In other words, that there just might be a deal saying, like, we publish your games in Europe. I mean, that's just the way it is. Does it affect you? No. It doesn't affect you at all. I-, I think that here's the thing. If NIS wasn't publishing Dancing All Night in Europe, no one would. I mean, it's just like... They're getting you the games, Yeah, like, right? so it's just, it's just... These are the people that are bringing you the games. The games are the same. You're just going to have a different splash screen in the beginning. And other than that, it's going to be identical. And I think that's great. You know? So I don't think it affects you at all. It's It's weird. There's no fucking doubt about it. It's like we talk about with Nintendo. Yeah. Where they just publish games. And Nintendo, it's weird because Nintendo is just a publisher. A huge publisher. and they But they publish like this game. is like y- 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 Yoshi's Yarn. Yeah. And yeah. you're up here. And then like four months later in the United States, like why? That's the way people forget. A lot of younger people don't forget. You know, don't remember though. We used to wait 18 months to two and a half years for games uh, in the West. Right. So things are better now. Yeah. Improved. I mean, that's the whole thing is like, thank God there's people who pick up other people's rights and do the, I mean, look at uh, Demon's Souls, right? Like PlayStation passed on it. So Atlas had to put it yeah, out. Which was a know? huge blunder. What oh, an yeah. incredible, that's going to go down in terms but, of like biggest blunders of that generation. Yeah. Right? They really fucked up on that. Like I, I, I think, I mean, clearly Bloodborne was a reflection on that. Sure. But I'll make good. Yeah. I'm like, but they really me. dropped the ball because dark souls could have been a PlayStation exclusive for them. Completely. Can you imagine? And Bandai Namco was smart enough to be like, well, we'll just, we'll fund it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they really, really dropped the ball. Yeah. Um, Hindsight's twenty twenty though. You yeah. know what I mean? This has clunky controls and it isn't that fast. Nobody will want to play it. Yeah. I mean, and, and I don't blame it. I mean, uh, like if I played that game, I remember when Sam Bishop reviewed it for us, he gave us like a 9.3, but yeah. we were back on IGN. I remember that, yeah. And right. I remember we were late on the review too. We, totally. It was a game we were ignoring. Yeah. Because we're like, who the fuck cares about this? Yeah. Um, and we eventually got a review out like several weeks after the game came out and he gave it a huge a high score and that game had a slow burn but it shows you that publishers sometimes are catastrophically wrong i mean you you hear the the biggest cat, cat, catastrophe was minecraft was shot to everyone yep you know 
and they and that company made billions of dollars and i'm sure that people at sony and microsoft and all these publishers are like fuck but, you know, I mean, like, how, but again, how do you know? How, you get so many games about, shopped at you, and you get this game, and it looks like blocky shit. And you're like, what the fuck? Is yeah, this? I mean, I, I always say that if I and I've said it before. If I saw Minecraft, I'd been like, are you fucking kidding me? Get out of my office, notch. You know, because it's a fucking lightning in a bottle thing. Yeah. You know, like it's just it. It didn't make any sense until it did. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The funny thing about Minecraft is the same thing about mobile gaming, though. It's it's its own little isolated platform that really has nothing to do with anything else. You know what I mean? It's like people play Minecraft, right? Sure. People play Dota. People play these games, these these encapsulated games that really have nothing to do with the rest of the world. The rest of gaming. Yeah. You know, they're just this huge phenomenon. Yeah. It's interesting to think about it, but people passed on Minecraft. Yeah. Just like 25 publishers passed on uh, Bloodstained. Like a bunch we'll of see more, that's the next Minecraft. Like a bunch of mo- well, I'm just saying that's, that's that's some of the most moronic shit I've ever heard in my life. I can't believe that publishers went like looked at that game and looked at Yeah, who working like, on it? Is it what game? No, I don't need this. Thanks. It's like, what are you crazy? Put on their sunglasses and they walked out of the room. Oh, man, some pub- publishers are crazy. They're very risk averse. I heard a heard a rumor that that's the reason Jack Trenton left. Yeah, he was he so wanted he passed on Ega. I'm out of here. Yeah. Uh, Brig Brig I says I was wondering what you guys thought are some of the best and worst mini games in gaming. Personally, some of my favorites come from Mario Party and WarioWare franchises. While one of my least favorites would be that of the beauty pageants in Pokemon. Thank you for reading my question and keep up the good work. Yeah, the Pokemon shit's awful, isn't it? The the I don't even know what they're referring to. Yeah, the, the, there's a lot of extraneous shit in Pokemon games. Yeah. Uh what came to my mind immediately was the the arcade machine in Catherine. I can't remember the name. It's like oh, Rapunzel or something like that or yeah. something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was basically just the game. Yeah. Um I loved that. Because yeah. it was kind of a it was kind of a teaching tool, but it was also fun to just kind of fuck around with it. Um the things that stick out to me is like just I never fucked around with them ever and didn't care was like all that shit in GTA four and five like the bowling oh, the and like it's and like, shit. It's like yeah yeah it's yeah. like it's f- accoutrements like that less accoutrements are fun yeah, accoutrements. if you put a little thought into them but I feel like a lot of this stuff people put in the games that's why I feel about the Pokemon stuff is it's just like there to like oh this will waste your time if you want sure 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 you know? extend it a little bit longer yeah I mean. You know, a good one, and this is, I'm taking a little bit differently, I think, of the attack. It's more of a mechanic, I guess, but like the tor- torture sequence in Metal Gear Solid. Like, that was like the first time, you know, I pound X or whatever, and then it keeps going, and they're asking all these questions and stuff. I remember thinking it was impossible to not submit, or to, you had to submit, you know what I mean? Otherwise, you die or whatever. And then, of course, you eventually talked. I talked to a friend in high school, who was like, if you don't, you know, this changes. Like, why? And you had to go look it up, and it was like, you had to get a chapstick was the easiest way to do it and rub it back and forth in the X button, and it would just read fine, and you'd never have to worry about it, which is a, a pro tip for anything that ever makes you tap a button. Just take a chapstick or a pen and rub it across the button. It fucks up your controller, but you feel like a, a god. Um, but that was a cool one, right? That was a different take on what i had to do there and how it was going to work i think of bad ones i think of when i cut a perfect circle out of my hand playing mario party the original one on n64 when i would take it and ru- you know rub it back and forth i think i was blowing up the balloon for that one or whatever and it was just perfectly cut it out and it was super raw and hurt forever yeah i don't know like the the whole the whole mini game thing is fun in premise but usually it's just kind of a waste yeah like focus on the core what is the core experience like what does it matter a great mini game is gwent i was gonna say well bad mini game is gwent just to fuck with you i thought witcher like i feel like that i feel like it's inevitable that that's gonna be a standalone game on ipad oh god probably (laughs) jesus christ that's a great example of an ipad game that people actually like hearthstone yeah yeah well it's on pc too yeah there you go so it doesn't count um yeah, I don't know. I, 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 Gwent is probably the. I usually don't fuck around with these things, but yeah. Gwent was the last one where I was like, yeah, I, I like this, uh, very much, very much, uh, very much. Mm. Uh, doubling back because I had made had this point popped up in my head, and then I never said it because I forgot, and we got caught up in something else. You're talking about doing Uncharted with somebody else. Why does it have to be Nathan Drake? I counter with Infamous. Oh, yeah, it, that should good, it should always great, been Cole. Shouldn't that's a we great shouldn't point. even bothered. I think when you get like if they do Last of Us two. And it's not Joel or Ellie, then we're gonna be like, oh, cool, this is a universe that exists. I think Uncharted is too locked into this point that it's for Nathan Drake. It's got to be Nathan Drake. Yeah, it's more of a hypothetical. I don't know if I necessarily really in the, in the main really want a Drake story without Drake in it. Yeah, but it's just to say like nothing is really sacred. Sure, I agree. okay, I understand. Yeah. Infamous is a good example. It's a great example, but Infamous just wasn't handled right. Like that's the that's the major problem with it. Infamous could live on and will live on and does live on without without Cole. It's just to say, like, Delson was a not a good character, and and in my opinion, and and uh, there was no real resolution. Like, 
because the game can end however you want it to end, really, like the, there's no resolution to what happened with Cole. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, Cole himself was an interesting character. It really wasn't so much about him, though, as much as it was about like what happened and why does this world act like Cole never existed? You know, like sure. that. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, and that you have to kind of like in a, in a game where that like where it's like there's choices to be made. It's like Mass Effect. Like it's like no, this really is what happened. I'm like, well, why did you give us a choice at all? You know, what I really would have fucking loved with Infamous Second Son is that they were bold enough to read to have some way to transfer your PS3 save to your PS4. And the game played from the very beginning based on what you did in Infamous 2. Yeah. You know? Totally. That would have been fucking awesome. Yeah. Possible? Probably not. Technically? There would have been a way you could You just would have wasted a lot of time. You would have had to patch the Infamous 2 and, and figure that kind of stuff. That sucks, but... Yeah. Something bold like that would have been cool to at least give you agency since that game... That 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 series is always about agency, you know? Yeah. That's a good, that's a good example. Very good example. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen... That's the kind of funny games cast. We do it for each and every week. If you want it early, head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Throw us a few bucks and get the MP3 Thursday evenings. If you don't want to give us any money, no big deal. Head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. You can get it broken up topic by topic day by day until we post the entire thing on the following Friday as an MP3 and video. Colin. Yes. This has been lovely. It's been good. We should do it again sometime. Well, I'm sure we will. All right, good. Until next time, Tim is a fuckwad. It's been our pleasure to serve you.